It is March 31st, anchored in St. Augustine, waiting for a weather window to Bermuda. Uh, anyway, this is how I got into this situation here. These are the pilot charts I used. And as you can see in March, the red hazardous condition lines are below this highlighted mark here, which is Bermuda. Uh, this, these pilot charts obviously have your currents in green and your traditional wind directions and strengths uh, on the blue windrows. Uh, so this is March. This is April, where the hazardous conditions are just above Bermuda and May even further above Bermuda. So I knew I was getting here early uh, but I was hoping for a little global warming southerlies to come in early uh, that would and would have carried me across the um, Gulf Stream and uh, anyway that's what I was thinking but no such luck. So now that I'm here uh, I'm no longer really using the pilot charts uh, I'll be using predict wind and predict wind dials these grid files you select a section of the globe and uh, shrink it down to a usable amount of data and then you select this uh, download arrow after you've selected where you want to go and if you're going to do it from the web, which I'm doing now, you can also do it from Iridium Go or Starlink, uh, whatever you have available to you. Now, when <clears throat> you um, are on the web on shore, or if you're on Starlink, of course, you can download as big a grid file as you like. Uh, and this one, what I have selected, uh, is pretty much everything. 12-hour intervals, 10 days worth of weather. Um, and as far as the plotting, you can not plot and just get the weather, which will also shrink your grip file. But uh, I've selected the weather routing to be in the departure planning mode. So in that mode, um, I can select, uh, it's going to give me four departure times. And I've selected those times to be 24 hours apart. And then, of course, you would select the models that you want to use. You, get, you have to have at least four, or, or I think four is what you got to have. Not at least, but you'll have four. And then you uh, put in your boat performance. And I've selected uh, off the predefined list, instead of putting in my boat performance, I've just selected one that they have in there already, which is a Contessa 32. Um, you can also select uh, sea conditions that you don't want or that you want to avoid, uh, whether you're going to be motoring, uh, you want that to take that into consideration, depth avoidance, um, so when it, when it charts your plot, uh, it, it won't take you over depths that your boat is too deep uh, of a hole for, uh, currents, um, anyway there's advanced routing in here as well but you have to pay for the $500 package for that I think this one I just paid for three months for the standard you get you get enough usability uh, if you're a professional racer you might uh, go the other route GPS tracking so you're it'll track your boat along the course anyway with the with the data that I've selected um, oh and also it the GM DSS forecast it'll give you um, a current uh, hazardous conditions from NOAA uh, or whoever else is putting that out gales uh, waves ice sea ice whatever's going on in that particular location anyway this is 747 kilobytes if and I'm gonna download that or actually I already have uh, from shore that's not a problem if I was offshore I would use the offshore optimization. It knocks that down to 150, just the parameters that you're going to need. It'll still route you and all that, but uh, 150 kilobytes will take between 15 and 20 minutes to download by, via satellite on Iridium Go. If I left it at 700, that would be over an hour. So you kind of get the end, plus you got to pay for uh, all the, the, the data that you download. 
anyway I've already downloaded it and this is a grib file that's been downloaded and the routing departure planning uh, you can see the warnings there so clearly I'm not leaving on any of those departures and if I want to just see what's going on real quick to um, get rid of any departure date that I want which all of them are bad you can go to here which is easier to look at uh, the maximum gusts that I would see if I left today would be 50 this is the maximum sustained would be 35 um, I wouldn't be going upwind it'd be all downwind uh, reaching 25% and downwind 75% I would see 40 knots 8% of the time uh, normally I would be between 20 and 30 knots at 56% the waves 26% uh, of the time it would be between 4 and 5 meters anyway these are conditions that I wouldn't want to go in and how it came to those was by using four different weather models and so as you can see for trip one you have those four weather models you can pick a weather model and and uh, base your decision to leave on whichever weather model you you think is accurate or you can hit summary and it will average all four weather models for that departure for you then you go to map um, clearly these are all no good um, get rid of that if you've select if you found a good one and you've selected it you can hide the ones you don't want so we'll, we'll hide all but uh, departure two. you can also see what you'd be looking at on this one would be on Thursday the 4th at 2 o'clock, 2.45, you'd be at 28 knots of wind, gusting 34. Uh, your course would be 92 degrees. Your speed would be 6.6 .6 knots. The wind would be off your port at 178 true wind angle. Uh, so on and so forth. It, it gives you the situation you'd be in. And then you can also run it uh, automatically and read for yourself. Uh, you can bring it forward uh, to see what's going on at any given location. Anyway, it's a great app. Uh, it's I recommend it if you're going to go offshore um, for any length of time or in a in a month that is traditionally unsafe to do so. This will uh, take a lot of the guesswork out of it.